Yo, what's good, y'all? It's me, Rennie. Welcome to Rennie's Rants. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the medical, excuse me, the medical kits that I just posted on the gram that I keep in me and my wife's car. Uh, my Tahoe, may it rest in peace, used to have a storage box and it doesn't, so I had random things laying around. I was like, yo, let's put this together so things stop slushing around. Uh, anyway, moving on, uh, I'll start with things that are outside of the bag, then I'll go into the bag, and we'll work from there. So here we have something real basic. These are just emergency triangles. Uh, if your car breaks down, um, side of the road, pull these out, um, you pop it up. Uh, gotta turn it around, gotta turn it around. You pop it into place and it makes a triangle. Just like that, there's three of them. You turn it, you lock it, boom, boom, boom. You set them down behind your car uh, about, I think, uh, 20, 20 or 30 feet between them so that cars see the triangles as they come up on the back of the car and nobody uh, hits you on the side of the road. So I like these because they fall down, they break down, and then they come into this nice little uh, storage box. And boom, that's donezo. So moving on, I actually have another set of emergency lights. However, these are magnetic. And I like these because they also have a little hook on them so if you want to put it in the window if the car has to get towed uh, if your battery dies or I guess if your starter or alternator dies causing the car to die while in motion you can pull these out each click of the power button gives a different pattern um, and it's pretty bright because I have lights on it here it's daylight outside um, and then you can sort of just click through figure out which pattern works for you um, you can also go solid or dim or directional if you want to tell people to go around you. Um, and then there's this little flashlight in the front, but I already have a flashlight, so don't really need to use that. Uh, comes in this nice pouch. Also comes with these uh, rubber tipped gloves. Um, so, you know, if you got to pop out, change tires, something like that, gloves come in handy. Um, and they shove in here. I have these clipped onto the bag just in case I'm in a situation where I have to actually grab this if I needed it. Um, and I needed these so that I don't get hit on the side of the road helping somebody else. Uh, this carabiner is from, carabiners are sort of rock climbing clips, if you will. Um, this is not, please don't rock climb with this, okay? Uh, it's not gonna hold your weight. But I, I like carabiners because they allow me to just clip things onto things and keep them in place. And uh, that's about that. So on top, I will untie this real quick. Um, so in this beautiful bright yellow pouch, we have safety rope. And these are much bigger carabiners. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, so I keep this in the car and I used to keep it with my truck too because you don't know in a wet area and I travel a lot for DJing, photography work, things of that nature, but you don't know if you're gonna go off the side of the road, if your car is gonna go in a ditch, uh, if there's somebody else, um, or God forbid, I was in an accident and the side rail of the highway stopped us from going down a 75 foot uh, incline into a river, right? But had the car gone over and we needed to climb out of there, we still would have had rope. So comes in handy. Um, I know you might be asking yourself, what am I gonna need rope for? But trust me, it's better to have rope and not need it than need it and not be able to get to it. Uh, on the other side, I will turn this around. So right here, we have a safety beacon or a rescue beacon. Uh, I leave the battery in upside down. 
um, just so that I know there's always a battery in there when I need it. When you click it, it goes solid, untwist it, twist it again, and it blinks. So if you're out camping, if you're in the woods, something like that, you can clip this on your jacket, uh, on your Molly for your camping bag or, you know, your survival bag, whatever. Uh, also, I have a whistle, survival whistle, uh, real simple, real loud. If you're out there, if you get caught in the rain, if you skid off the side of the road and people can't find you, boop, just start blowing a whistle. Eventually, people will hear you. They'll, they'll come save you, um, things of that nature. All right, so let's talk about the bag itself. Very basic EMT bag. Uh, I used to have um, sort of military tactical bags. Uh, I like those, um, but for the cars, since I kind of wanted them to match, uh, I just got these. Um, shout out to my little brother. He gave me the idea to pick these up. Uh, they're like 25 bucks on Amazon. I try to make a list of everything to put in the description so that people can find all of this stuff. Um, you have two side zipper pockets, and then you have one Velcro covered pocket in the front. So on the right side, I have a tourniquet. So if you don't know what a tourniquet is, take it out, you wrap it around yourself, pull it tight, you turn the knob, and it stops or slows down the blood flow to the place that you got injured. Um, so if you're in an accident and something has punctured your arm, your leg, your stomach, whatever, you take this and you wrap it around that body part and pull it as tight as possible to the point where it's probably going to hurt and you lock it in place. Um, this will keep you from potentially bleeding out. I like the recon medical tourniquet because on the white Velcro piece, it has time. So I can write down what time I applied this tourniquet. Uh, you probably want to get to a hospital or official medical help uh, as soon as possible. You know, but you also don't want to be wearing this for too long because then you're going to sort of start to hemorrhage because now there's too much blood being stopped and it'll start to back up. Um, so I leave this on the outside because if I were to get punctured or stabbed with something, I don't want to contaminate the whole bag with bloody hands going through the thing, right? You know, uh, nobody wants that. Also in the side pocket, uh, a little extra medical tape. Can never have too much medical tape. Um, in the front here, I have a uh, air cast. Um, this is a universal ankle one. They do make left and right ankles. Uh, I just keep, I used to have two, uh, but I think I split these up because my wife actually hurt her ankle. And I decided to put the full set in hers. <laughs> um, then wrapped up in Ziploc bag is black Nitrix gloves. Um, I don't use latex gloves anymore. Not because I'm allergic to latex, but because there are a lot of people who are allergic to latex. And God forbid I actually have to help somebody. Last thing I need to do is give them an allergic reaction to something. <laughs> um... Then on the other side, if I can open the pocket, I'll take this out real quick. So I have uh, anti-itch cream, hydrocortisone from MedPride, and I have um, antibiotic ointment also from MedPride. Um, then I I like these Steris strips. Basically, what you do is you undo the back of the strip, you put it down. You pull it and you stick it down. It's a quick way to close a deep cut, gash, wound, whatever. Uh, these are half inch by four inches long. Um, it's just really, really, really uh, quick stuff if you were to have a nasty gash. I have two scars on my arm, although y'all can't see them. Uh, when I was a kid, I put my hand through the kitchen window. Uh, so in this sense, I did need stitches on both of them, but my brother would have been able to put them on one side, pull, push down, lock it in place. And then when we got to the hospital, they'd have been able to take it out and I wouldn't have bled as <laughs> much as I did and uh, ruined my mom's chair. Uh, then I also have wound seal. So wound seal is a powder like substance. You basically take the little tube out, you undo the cap, you pour it in a wound, 
press your hand on top and it basically makes an instant scab. Uh, there are other names for it like quick clot. Um, I don't have any more quick clot because I gave it to somebody who, who actually did need it. Um, and I just haven't bought any more because I have five of these. And how many times am I gonna use that right now? Uh, I hope not too many. Um, all right, so moving into the bag itself, there are Velcro attachments, I mean, not Velcro, elastic attachments in the top for you to clip things and elastic on each of the side flaps that open. Uh, on one flap, I have a flashlight that has a crank in a solar panel on it. Uh, the solar panel is probably less effective, but this crank, you take it, you wind it up for 60 seconds, and then boom, flashlight comes on. Uh, I like this because it, it means that I don't have to worry about having a flashlight run out of batteries if I actually need it. So it just stays in there. I clip it into the elastic and whenever I need it, I, it's right there. Uh, this is probably going to get replaced at some point. Um, I just got these because they were freebies. Uh, so why not use them? Um, it is a paracord bracelet on it has a compass, a uh, safety beacon or rescue beacon, and the compass doesn't work at all. Okay, terrible compass. Don't use this. Don't rest. Don't rely your life on this. Uh, I do have better compasses. They're just not in this bag. They're in my camping pack right now. Um, the reason that I keep this in here is because inside of it is a flint and a strike knife. So God forbid I am actually out somewhere and I get stranded because the car died or I get trapped because the car was off the road and I'm in the woods and I need to start a fire. I have a flint right here. Uh, make sure you gather as much dry leaves or branches as possible. Get them together. Strike, 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 strike. Start your fire, stay alive. Um, moving beyond that, uh, I will go to the ace bandages can never have too many ace bandages. So I believe I keep six inch, four inch, two inch. Yeah, so I have two four inches, one six inch, and one two inch ace bandage in each pack. Um, I like to keep my ace bandages as I lose it and it rolls away from me uh, off camera and runs for its life. I like to keep ace bandages because you never know who's gonna sprain an ankle, who's gonna fall, uh, things of that nature. Um, so more on the survival side, this isn't necessarily a medical thing. Uh, these are solar lights. They're made by Luminade. Um, you basically, uh, let me see. So I like these because they're inflatable and it turns into a lantern, right? You take the little piece out, and honestly, you don't have to blow it up, but you would blow it into it. You inflate it, you hit the power button, and you have a little lantern that you know you can use, right? So you can also turn down the brightness of it until it goes off, and then it goes into flash mode. So it's a little lantern. Um, but the real thing that I like about it is there's a charging port on this bad boy. So you can plug your device into this and charge your phone um, or whatever device or emergency device that you, that you need to use directly from this pack. Um, you can also charge it up with the cord that they gave you. Um, and you can use the solar panel on top to charge it. So if you really were to be stranded, you could use this, um, in multiple different, uh, places. And that's why I like to keep these in there because they are super duper duper handy. Um, it, you can never have enough lanterns or lights in an emergency kit. Uh, let's see if I can put this back together real quick. 
Also good folks, make sure you practice with this stuff. Like when you get it, you know, if you've never applied a tourniquet, it's nothing for you to practice in your living room. So just hop to it. Uh, all right, so we're gonna stick that back in there. Then we're going to jump over here to thermal blankets. So the thermal blankets, these are emergency blankets. Uh, as you can see, it got like a little aluminum foil on one side. Uh, real simple, you take them out, you wrap them around yourself and it keeps the heat inside, right? If you get soaked and you're trapped outside, this is a good thing to have. If it's cold, if somebody like fell in a pool and it started to get cold, you know, if you're at the beach and somebody's in there and you gotta drag them out, um, things of that nature. Uh, I also keep it just in case like I were to ever be stranded and God forbid I have a passenger with me. I don't want them to freeze to death or get hypothermia or something. Um, this is more so for my campers, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, then on that note, I also have a two person uh, survival tent. So it's a thermal tent. You basically set this bad boy up. You can do uh, just one loop over, meaning put some string up or, or your rope. And then you hang it over the top and you get inside. Uh, but it does come with string. However, I don't know, a string is kind of thin. <laughs> so I don't know how well that's gonna hold if it were windy outside, but I keep this because it's waterproof, windproof, uh, thermal barrier. You could fit about two people in it and I'm 6'5". So it's eight feet long by five feet wide. So you're not gonna have a ton of space. It's not a king size bed kind of thing, but you can get two people underneath this thing uh, in survival mode and really like get out of the elements in a hurry, right? Um, okay, so, and there goes another ace bandage, whatever. Uh, this little pack is a CPR mask pack because if somebody passes out and you need to administer CPR, especially right now in the times of where like Rona is trying to kill us all, right? you don't want to go mouth to mouth, right? You don't know what's happening, what kind of germs are involved, things of that na nature. So you get a mask. Uh, there are two masks in this little pack. There is a children's mask and there's an adult mask. Uh, you put it over their face, you blow into the tube, and that's how you administer the airflow into uh, their body. Now for, what else do we have? Um, then I also have disposable scalpels. Um, these I believe are a number two, no, sorry, a number 10, uh, scalpel. Uh, the numbers on scalpels just, uh, is about the, the shape of the tip and the size of the blade. I keep disposable scalpels because they are very good at cutting things. Do I anticipate that I'm going to need to open a lung? Uh, to remove a clot while I'm camping or stranded somewhere? Probably not. But if I need to cut something, scalpels, scalpels are very sharp and these are disposable. So if I did need to cut into something or somebody to help them or for them to help me, I don't want to put it back in there and then my blood or other germs are on it and it's not sterile anymore. So I keep five of these in here. Um, I've only had to use a scalpel once uh, and it wasn't on a person. Uh, we went camping and we needed to shave some, some twigs down for uh, a, a camp structure or a, a tent structure rather. And uh, yeah, scalpel came in handy. Um, then I keep pole packs and hot packs. So all you do, you take it out, put it in your phone. There's a little target bag in the middle, pop it, and then it turns cold instantly. Uh, the same with the hot pack. You can never have too many heating packs or too many ice packs. Uh, but I keep two of each, so there's four in here. Um, real simple. And then the final piece, uh, I get these now because it's a lot quicker way uh, for me to get the bulk of the supplies that I need into the bag without having to like assemble this all over again. So this is just a, a first aid kit. 
Um, it says first aid only on it. I think that is actually the brand first aid only. Um, but I used to buy band-aids and buy burn cream and buy gauze and, and, and all of that stuff separately. So now I have it all in one place. Uh, I have trauma pads. Uh, these are five by nines. I have four by four gauze. I have band-aids of all kinds of sizes. Uh, I have burn cream. I have itch cream. I have an more antibiotic cream. I have roll of gauze, uh, this extra set of gloves. Um, I have oval pads. Um, I think I have uh, more, I think there's another ice pack in here too. Um, sting relief, uh, aspirin, towelettes, all kinds of stuff for like antiseptic, but you would keep your Advil, your Tylenol, your aspirin, uh, your Motrin, your antibiotics, your stain cream, your your alcohol pads, your gauze, more medical tape, uh, all in this thing. And basically, if you get a cut, a scrape, like I have on my hand, actually, yeah, um, you just pop this thing open, grab Band-Aid, close it back up, and you go on about your business. Um, but it's a lot easier to assemble this by buying it as a base. I believe it's like 20 bucks or 25 bucks. You get a lot of stuff in it already. I've sort of customized this a bit, adding the bigger trauma pads because I get my own uh, big gauze pads. And then I add my own gloves, but I leave the ones that they have in here. But you also get uh, some Q-tips. You get some cutting shears. Although these are not good cutting shears. Um, there are some items not in this bag that eventually will go back in this bag. But I have cutting shears um, that are large. <laughs> they are they are pretty large, but there's three different pairs that I get. Um, I have metal tweezers because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with these uh, plastic little guys. And, um, and then I have a neck brace as well. But uh, I the neck brace right now is in the trunk. I would like to incorporate it inside of a bag just so everything is all in one, but I keep the neck brace because there, there are plenty of times when I could have used one for to help somebody else and I just didn't have one. So now I just keep it in, uh, in the trunk, uh, by itself and I have a little bag and, and, and things like that. Um, the other thing that, that is not in here at the moment that is, I guess, piv pivotable, pivotable, pivotal to an emergency kit in a car uh, is fire extinguisher. So I always have fire extinguishers in my cars, in my trucks, um, in a house. I don't know why people don't have them. I don't know why it's so odd for people to like think that they should have them um but i have a fire extinguisher clipped into my trunk i have a fire extinguisher here in my kitchen i have another one upstairs uh then i have another one clipped into my wife's trunk and there's two in my garage the the reason for fire extinguishers in a car is because you are driving around on a vehicle toting flammable liquids Right, you get into a car accident, you get jostled around, you forget to turn the car off, it's smoking, boom, it catches on fire. The first time I put a fire extinguisher in my car, I kid you not, that same week, I was traveling to a gig from Jersey to Maryland, saw a car smoking on the side of the road, pulled over to call 911, lady was taking her kids out the car when the hood went up in flames. Grabbed the fire extinguisher, pulled the pin out, sprayed the whole car down, scrabbed the keys out the ignition, and we ran all the way back to my car and we just waited for the uh, fire department to show up. But had I not had it, I still would have pulled over and called the police. I'd have tried to make sure that her and the kids were safe. I'm like, yo, let's, let's get out of the range of the car. But I was able to like douse the fire so that we could really get out of harm's way. Um, also in your house, just have a fire extinguisher. You know, dryer fires are really prevalent in the country. 
Um, I think a pack of four fire extinguishers on uh, online is like 90 bucks. I'll take that at, at, at any day of the week at $90 to save my life, to save my wife's life, to make sure that my nieces, my nephews, anybody that comes to visit me, anybody that's in my car stays safe. Any of my friends that call me, I could run out and help them. They could stay safe. Like, I'm just with it. I'd just rather be with it than not be with it. Also, shout out to the painting next to me. I finally finished this bad boy. It's four feet by four feet. Um, and that's it. That is the, the medical kit slash pseudo survival kit that I keep in both me and my wife's cars. Um, so if we need something, we can pop the trunk and we can get right into it and uh if we got to take it out we we can snatch it out with the quickness it's not in the way i like to leave the the rope actually tied to the top of the bag so if i were to be in a car accident and things get thrown around i know that most of my emergency stuff is in one place uh the triangles will obviously be separate um, but I have an emergency set of lights here and then the neck brace will be separate. But in the future, I'm just going to go back to a, a bigger duffel and um, and probably incorporate the neck brace and and some other things into that bag. And I'll probably update the video after that. But hope you all like it. Uh, this is it for the end of Rennie Rants for today. Mouch out.